As the number of people killed by the virus now tops 1,000, a mask-wearing Chinese President Xi Jinping warning efforts to contain the outbreak are too restrictive and could squeeze growth. Here to get the Trump administration's response to the virus threat from an economic standpoint is Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth, Energy and the Environment, Keith Kroc. So good to have you, sir. By the way, Liz, it's so good to see you again, and I appreciate the fireside chat we did out there in Silicon Valley. It was well, great. I'm event. glad you're bringing up Silicon Valley because you are a Silicon Valley guy. You know how to tackle real-world problems from a techie standpoint, having been the CEO of DocuSign, the co-founder and CEO of Ariba Networks, which ended up being a $40 billion company. How's the Trump administration and State Department tackling what could become an even worse situation with the coronavirus. Right. Well, the, the, as the President Trump has said, the, the first thing is to protect the American citizens. And uh, I can tell you, coming from the private sector and watching the White House, the State Department, the interagency, and the decisiveness in terms of what, how fast we've moved um, and everybody working together, it, I mean, this is what we're really built for. So it, it's protecting uh, the American citizens. Obviously, our hearts go out to the people who've contracted that in the United States, in China, mm -hmm. and the rest of the world. We're erring on the, on the side of caution. The other thing, too, is that, you know, the United States is the most generous country in the world. As we were picking up uh, s some of our diplomats, we brought in about 18 tons of uh, aid in terms of equipment. Mm -hmm. There's been over a quarter of a billion donated between the United States government and the private sector. And over the last three years, the United States has uh, invest, has donated $43 billion uh, in terms of uh, viral diseases like this. Yeah. And uh, that's probably 10x uh, any other country. 10x. That's a that's a Silicon Valley type of term. But <laughs> as we look at the budget, one thing that is not cut is the ability to fight this type of thing from spreading. So the vaccine part of it is protected over at the CDC. Right. Uh, it's great to have confidence in the government regarding that. One part of the budget, because you are not just the Under Secretary of State for Economic Growth, but also the Environment and Energy, is the fact that it appears there will be cuts if it were to ever pass to clean energy, to wind power, to solar, to batteries, to electric vehicle batteries. You're a Silicon Valley guy. You care about the environment. Uh, you were a bipartisan yes vote at the Senate Foreign Relations Committee when you were waiting to be confirmed. How does that make you feel? Well, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, uh, my number one role is economic security. And if you think about because economic security, as the president said, is national security. And in our economic strategy, our three-pronged strategy, a key one is to leverage the innovation and the resources of the private sector. And when I say private sector, not just the business sector, but social sector, education sector. And that's one of the things that I look coming from Silicon Valley that we can really uh, take to the next level. But we don't want to cede any leadership position to China, and that's a security issue. China has these three electric vehicle companies, uh, BYD, you know, the sort of build your dreams, and that Neo, they're, they're these companies that are, are gaining, let's say. We've got Tesla, uh, we've got General Motors, Volt and Bolt, uh, they're getting rid of one of those, but I mean, don't we want to be in the leadership position in every technology? Well, absolutely, and especially the enabling technologies. And as a former VP of General Motors before, I went out to Silicon Valley. The youngest <laughs> VP ever to be hired at General Motors. Well, I, I appreciate that. But um, uh, if, if you think about it, the enabling technologies that go into that, I mean, you look at uh, cars now, it's almost, you know, software surrounded by sheet metal. Uh, and... Um, there's some major paradigm shifts going on. And I think that's one of the big things that we're focusing on is maintaining that lead in things like semiconductors, computing, uh, and keep driving the automotive business. This is a global business, so there's no doubt about that. But the innovation's coming out of the United States. And uh, not only uh, is our objective to accelerate the digital transformation, accelerate innovation, mm -hmm. um, accelerate through pro growth, you know, through the president's pro growth policies, but it's also to protect America's assets. Okay, then let me bring up what Chairman Jerome Powell of the Federal Reserve just said a few hours ago. He's worried about protecting American banks and American 
the internet, certainly. He's worried about cyber attacks and hacks. Of course, we've had the Equifax hack where the Chinese military has just been charged. Tell me about the meetings you've had with President Trump on this very issue and securing our nation. Well, if you look at that issue, um, you ask any CEO, what keeps you up at night? And after they say, well, it's all the opportunity out there, they'll say it is uh, the cyber threats, mm -hmm. right? And you never get a min on your pillow, you know, at the end of the night and say, hey, it's all done. It's all good. Never. You have to keep ever vigilant. And particularly, you know, if you think about my past experience at DocuSign, these were people's most important documents are the one you signed. You worried about DocuSign getting hacked? Well, uh, by the way, we always were. Uh, yeah. And uh, I mean, that's people's signature. Th that's people's signature. And that's why uh, we were so vigilant. That's why companies are so vigilant. And, you know, you're even hiring people that, uh, that will attack. So we hire attackers who will go in, th in, in their attack. So um, this is another area where working together with the private sector of the United States government, this is a huge threat. And uh, it, what's comforting to know as, you know, coming in, into the United States government to see how, uh, how, how these forces and experts are there. Keith Kroc, Undersecretary of State, great to have you come back again.